Hi, this is Larry Benko, W0QE, and this is another video in the SimSmith Basics series that I've been doing. This video today uh, starts with, does not start with SimSmith, but we'll get there very shortly. I've been working on another project recently to document some stuff I had done recently, and I used SimSmith to um, enable me to make some measurements that I was unable to make without uh, building some hardware that SimSmith enabled me to build. Anyways, the plot here on the screen shows a very ugly uh, RF interference from about 3.8 megahertz to about five, a little bit over 5.1. This is VDSL2. Um, don't believe anybody who tells you that VDSL does not uh, propagate. This is an upstream path from a customer to the DSLAM. Uh, it has a, a very kind of a non-uniform uh, spectrum plot but uh, that's partially due to the uh, equalization of the modem. Uh, oftentimes you'll see it just slope up, oftentimes you'll see it just slope down uh, based on um, you know, how the modem equalizes. But nevertheless, we see uh, within a very short um, frequency span of just a few kilohertz, noise rising about 14 or 15 dB. This is not the worst case we've seen by any means, but this is a, a, fairly, um, a fairly egregious uh, RF interferer, to say the least. So anyways, um, this is not part of the topic, but anyways, as, as we were trying to track this down, I ended up building an active preamp to go with a short vertical to do, a, to do these spectrum plots. These spectrum plots were instrumental when we had this, the CenturyLink people out, and they swore that their um, DSL did not radiate, and that we needed to prove that they, it, it did, and we could show the plot, and they turned the DSL off, and it went away. Um, proving that, of course, it, wa it was their uh, interference, which we knew all the time. But sometimes it's hard to prove that to people. Nevertheless, though, um, let me get back to the experiment that I was doing here just recently. So here is an example of what I was trying to do. I had a high impedance amplifier here that I was trying to test and see how linear it was. In the process of doing that, I was going to uh, give it a 7 megahertz signal, and I was going to look at the harmonics that came out of this amplifier. Now we can measure linearity a lot of different ways. People measure it sometimes with signal to noise ratio. Uh, people measure it with IMD. Uh, you can measure it with uh, harmonics generated. Uh, all of them measure linearity. Nevertheless, uh, I had some of these uh, components already, so I thought I'd start with a 7.16 megahertz uh, CW signal. I have, I have a crystal filter that I built that's just a three kilohertz wide filter that will pass the fundamental through. It'll attenuate the harmonics. Now, why do we have harmonics? Well, all signal generators have generally harmonics down 55, 60 dB, or one of our transmitters do too. I was able to put an ICOM 706 in here and it works just the same way. Um, basically, uh, the harmonics being down 50, 55 dB are not nearly enough to prove that the amplifier is good. So, what I wanted to do is get that down further. I put the crystal filter in here, and at low signal levels, like minus 20 dBm and, and lower, I had no uh, second and third harmonic here. However, when I cranked the, the amplitude up, the crystal filter became somewhat nonlinear, and I started to see the second and third harmonics come up. I happened to have a 40-meter um, bandpass filter, one of the W3NQN ones uh, that I built a few years ago, and it has like 70 dB of isolation of uh, attenuation at 14 megahertz and about 45 at uh, 21 megahertz, which are second and third harmonics. With that in the circuit, I had, did, had absolutely nothing coming out of this at this point at all. It was all fundamental frequency, no harmonics at all. Now, I hooked my spectrum analyzer up right here. My spectrum analyzer hooked it to this point, and I saw some harmonics. And that was what I was measuring was the linearity of the spectrum analyzer, unfortunately. So what I need now is I needed a circuit, and this is the filter I want to build. This, I need a filter which basically will, will pass the harmonics but stop the fundamental. And I need to build that, but unfortunately I can't design that filter uh, with, the, with the software that I have. And that's what we're going to use SimSmith for. So very quickly, also while I'm at it here, I wanted to put it in a box like this. 
Um, these little Pomona boxes are about 1.8 inches this dimension, about 0.95 this way, and about three quarters of an inch deep. This is the final filter I ended up building, but I wanted it to fit in there, so I didn't have room to make a seven or eight pole filter to go in there. So having said all that, let's use LC here, which LC is a free program. I, this is a paid version I, I, I bought, um, but it's, it's available free for up to se a seventh order filter. And let's uh, start um, a design here very simply. We're, we need a high pass filter. So let's, uh, capacitors are easier to come by than inductors. So we make it high pass on the input side. Uh, and output side, we end up with more capacitors than inductor. inductors. We'll make a chubby chuff filter, set the bandwidth to say 13 megahertz, or the, 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 the cutoff point. Make it say a fifth order filter. It's a 50 ohm filter. And we'll give it just a teeny bit of pass band ripple. Um, and let's see what we get if we do something like that. So we calculate it, and there's a schematic. We look at the plot of this circuit, and we see that at 7 megahertz, the filter is only down about 20 dB, right in here. Well, that's not going to be nearly enough to make my uh, fundamental signal go away. I wanted 50 or 60 or 70 dB right here. Now, I could have asked for a much, uh, a lot more poles in my filter. I could have asked, say, a ninth order filter. And there it is. Now I'm down, say, 60 dB. However, uh, I'm not real flat right here. I've got a little bit of roll off to here. I'd have to count for that half dB of loss on every time I made a measurement. And there's a small other problem, and that is it isn't going to fit in my box. So let's go back to this fifth order filter here for a moment. <clears throat> Poor attenuation, nice pass band. Let's put this circuit in SimSmith and see what we can do with it. Okay, here's a circuit in SimSmith. These are the same components that uh, LC gave us for our circuit. I'm plotting SWR and magnitude uh, at the same time here. And I've got four points selected. I've got seven, 7.3. 7 here's my, here's the area I'd like to have a, a notch in. Here's 14.2 and here's 21.3. These are defined to be my second and my third harmonics. So what I see in this filter is exactly what LC predicted too. Uh, Q of 100, which is what I also had in LC too. I didn't show that, but it was a Q, they were Q of 100 parts. They're little inductors. Um, they're in this little box. They're kind of next to the next to the metal. I don't know if the Q of 100 is reasonable or not. It's probably no worse than 100. That's pretty heavy wire, and it's wound on a T uh, or T50-6 cores, 12 turns. So, anyways, I didn't measure. I did not measure the Q of the inductors. So I've got this circuit now, and this circuit is absolutely inadequate for what I need here. So what I really need to do is I need to put a notch here. Now, SimSmith is not a filter design program by any means. However, if we have a, a filter that we start off with, SimSmith is pretty good at letting us alter that filter and still keeping things, still keep things under control. If I had to just randomly pick values here and come up with a filter, I'd find that would be pretty laborious to say the least. So by starting off with reasonable, reasonable values, I can uh, get to where I want pretty easily. So what I need is I need something that's going to stop 7 megahertz in that area from getting through this filter. Well, parallel circuits here tuned at 7 megahertz would do it. That requires more inductors. Series tuned LC circuits here would have shunts, would have shorts to ground at 7 megahertz. That looks like a better like a better choice. So we can do that in SimSmith. Let's go pick a component like this. We're gonna go in, we're gonna go in here for the in the for the moment, and we're gonna have to have two of these, one, one over here too. What we're going to do is we're going to use the same value of inductance that this has, and we're going to start off with a, a really big capacitance, just, just, for, just for grins. So 479 nanohenries here. And we'll take this, this component, get rid of it. We'll copy this one, put it there, take this component, and get rid of it. And what we see is the same circuit. This point, these one microfarad capacitors are just massive. The resonant frequency is 0.2 megahertz. Um, there, is a, there are some notches way down here, but we don't care about that. So now, let's take these, this, this circuit, 
and we're going to just drop the capacitance down and, and watch what happens. So we're going to click on it here and we're going to start. You want to watch the resonant frequency come up as I do this and pretty soon we'll start to see some some action here. Yeah, we're starting to see something here now. We see, we see the SWR going away a little bit in our passband. We see a notch here. At This is set to 2.8 megahertz now. This is 2.8 rough, roughly. We can do the same thing with this one. Okay. Now I'm seeing two. two. One of them is, is due to this circuit. The other notch is due to this circuit. Let's take both these notches and let's move them up somewhere here around 7 megahertz. Move the first one to just about 7 megahertz. Move the second one to just about 7 megahertz. And what we got is, is something that's... The SWR is not good enough over here at the moment, but we have pretty good notch in the 40 meter band. So generally when you have two, two circuits that are resonant like this, it's a little bit smarter to, to stagger them. Uh, then it gives you a little bit wider bandwidth. And we have plenty of notch depth here with just with Q of 100 inductors. So let's make this, um, we'll lock the frequency of this one. And we'll make this one say 7.25 megahertz. We'll lock the frequency of that one. Now, in the process of doing this, um, Sim Smith came along and uh, changed our inductance slightly. Um, but that's okay. These values are not that far off from what we, what we had before. And basically what I'd like to do is I'd like to get, get a couple, I'd like to have a couple things happen. First of all, my, my second harmonic here is right at the, right where I'm starting to roll off. So if I look at the, the amplitude here, it's down three tenths of a dB. I'd like to move this knee down a little bit. In the process of moving this knee down a little bit, I'd like to correct for the um, passband SWR somewhat. And I'd like to keep the notch from getting too bad. So to move everything down, we just need to increase the uh, values of all the of all the components. So let's increase them. Let's see, it's 10% at a time. So I'll go 10, 20, 30%, 10, 20, 30%, 10, 20, 30%. Now here, uh, they track. So we'll increase this 10, 20, 30%. 10, 20, 30 percent roughly. So now I've moved the notch down here quite a bit further than where it was. I have attenuation here that's a little bit over, uh, it's less than two tenths of a dB. This one's less than one tenth of a dB. This is looking pretty good. I need to get these SWRs down now. So let's start playing with the circuit and see what we see what we can do. Um, Kind of interesting. This is this is the power of SimSmith right here. You can do all this stuff in a program like LC or LT Spice, but you can't do it in a way that's nearly this intuitive and this quick to do. It's a little bit scary how easy this is to do. So now I'd said at this point I was pretty pretty close to being pretty close to being done. So I wound two inductors. Turns out my inductors did not end up being these values. So they ended up being, I'm going to put the values in, and these values were measured measured at 7 megahertz. The first one turned out to be 667 nan, nanohenries, and the second one turned out to be 654 nanohenries. Now when you deal with small inductors and you have a limited number of turns, <clears throat> it's hard to get the value you, you want exactly. An integer number of turns can be stretched and uh, squeezed together a little bit, but that gets to be a kind of a pain. So I just took what I got. These values were not that far away. I took what I got. I have the capacitors here that, that match it. Um, I don't know if, if that's what I need or not, but this is what I have now for a circuit. And with these values in here, this SWR is less than 1.1 to 1 from 13 megahertz up. So passband is very good. My roll off at 14 megahertz is now less than a tenth of a dB. My roll off at 21 megahertz is less than a tenth of a dB. My notch is still plenty good. So let's build it. Now when I built this circuit, turns out that if you look at the schematic up here, 
and you look at this the box here you can see we have an input capacitor coming in from one side we have an inductor and a capacitor to ground here we have a capacitor right here which is the middle one then this inductor and capacitor here's two capacitors there go to ground and then we have the output capacitor and these values that I came up with uh, I have a large number of uh, silver mica capacitors like tens of thousands of them I picked up years ago and I went through and what I ended up finding was I could find a capacitor these 500 picofarad ones were all a little bit high they were all about 515 picofarad and I measured those at at at, at frequency I found a 200 mic, uh, picofarad capacitor was 195 picofarads and we already talked about um, these two these two um, inductors were what they were after I wound them I'm going to unlock these two these these two capacitors here or un unlock the frequency here and I'm going to artificially change the capacitor this one I ended up having was a 760 picofarad capacitor and I think this one was 740 I think it was 741 was the closest thing I could find and that was two little, uh, two capacitors to get me the 741 so let's get rid of this again and there's my filter so what my filter has is it has a second harmonic loss of less than a tenth of a dB third harmonic loss of less than a tenth of a dB fourth and fifth harmonic loss is less than a tenth of a dB SWR better than 1.1 to 1 from 13 megahertz which is a megahertz below my second harmonic it's got my 7 megahertz and my 7.3 megahertz now this doesn't show exactly because I need more more segments in my um, filter here so it only clicks on the nearest one so this is seven six point nine eight three this is seven point two nine one so that's pretty close but this this is very very deep turns out the measured um, there is a little bit of coupling between these uh, the measured um, uh, loss I have at 7.15 megahertz is about 64 dB so it turns out that this is a um, you know very good filter SimSmith was was instrumental in being able to just adjust this and tune it and I've done this probably I'd say I've done this probably 50 times with SimSmith for crystal filters I've done it for um, other filters I did it for some 160 meter filters to for people who had um, a broadcast station that was really loud and SimSmith works extremely well so this is my my suggestion would be basically give it a try uh, it does help to start off with something that's reasonable and this circuit here that we had has still two has still has two inductors added two capacitors to it and I changed my original circuit which was um, so I find my original one I hope I guess I, I don't have a rigid the original one's gone but the original one had had the loss that went like this and it kept going down we don't care that this one doesn't have any uh, doesn't have nearly as much loss as the original circuit down here at low frequencies the transmitter has no has no um, no spurious signals down here the transmitter only had the fundamental and then the harmonics uh, with you know there's some phase noise down here but the phase noise is extremely low so hopefully this has been interesting and hopefully um, uh, it'll give you some ideas of some things you can do with SimSmith. The ability to adjust the components on the fly and see the result instantaneously is really, really wonderful in SimSmith. One other thing you really need to do is you need to turn the filter around to look at it the other way. SimSmith is just looking at the SWR from this end, looking this way. This filter turns out to be symmetrical with these two, except with these two exceptions here. So let's move this one over to here this one over here and we, we know what we're going to see we're going to see basically the same thing if you plotted the two on top of each other you'd see it the SWR is just a little teeny different because these two um, sections are not identical but it's it's virtually identical hope everyone's enjoyed this and um, there'll be more videos